Dirichlet's principle, also known as pigeonhole principle. Boy, this is a big topic. Um, I guess I have to do many videos about this. There are countless uh, competition problems involving this. So we have to just dive in. There's many forms of this. There's the basic form, and that's what we're going to work with today. And then there's some more generalized uh, forms of this thing, and we'll look at them in upcoming videos. It was first used by Peter Dirichlet, great mathematician. He used it to prove very difficult things in number theory, so it's named after him. Uh, it's the kind of thing that is so simple you would never think of it, and it's really easy to understand but maybe difficult to apply. You can keep this in mind though. Use it. Uh, use it when you need you need to prove that something concerning finite sets or finite collections of anything exists. So the question will, will ask you, you know, prove that something exists and you have no idea how to build that something. Well, often it's provable by Dirichlet's principle. So we're going to look at the most basic form today and it works like this. It's usually phrased in terms of pigeons and holes, but I'm not going to do that. I'm going to use balls. So I have n plus 1 balls and I have I have n boxes. Why do I use boxes and balls? Because they're easier to draw than pigeons. And if I try to put these balls in the boxes, I'm going to uh, not be able to do that uh, without having one box uh, containing two or more balls. Okay, so if I put n plus one balls in n boxes, some box will have more than one ball. That's the idea. This is the most basic form of Dirichlet's principle and we're going to do some problems with this basic form. Uh, I guess the way to learn how to apply it is by doing a lot of examples um, and a lot of um, vari variations. You know, a lot, there are ways of using it in geometry, there are ways of using it in in so many different contexts and it's sometimes very unexpected you know set theory number theory geometry and you can use this to prove something uh, it's unexpected how that happens so we have to look at many different contexts for these problems so I should do many videos so the first problem we're gonna look at is like a really an easy one I have n plus one numbers and prove that Prove that there exist A and B among them such that uh, N divides A minus B. You say, how do I know that? How can I prove something like that? There's no way. I mean, I don't know what is N. I don't know what is A and B. I don't even know what these numbers are. How can I prove anything about them? That is exactly this situation. Use it when you need to prove that something concerning finite collections exists or is true. Exactly the situation. So when you really don't know how to do this, then use Dirichlet's principle. Okay, well, I have n plus 1 numbers. Now let's look at mod n. Mod n, what are the possible residues? 0, 0, 1, 2, all the way to n minus 1. These are the possible possible uh, remainders or residues possible remainders you see great so I can have boxes this is remainder 0 remainder 1 all the way up to remainder n minus 1 how many boxes do I have I have n boxes 
Okay, great. I have n boxes. Now let's try to put n plus 1 numbers in those boxes. If I put n plus 1 numbers in these boxes, well, sooner or later, I'm going to have a box with two numbers in it. Okay? I have, now, let's phrase that correctly. I have n plus 1 numbers, and these are my balls, into, into n boxes. Therefore, by Dirichlet's principle, one box will have uh, more than one number. Okay, so take two, two of them in that box, A and B, call them A and B. So one box is going to have an A and a B, maybe has more, maybe more, but like just take two of them. And this has remainder R. So A is congruent to R mod N, and B is congruent to R mod N, you see? You see? And so what's A minus B? Well, that's R minus R is congruent to zero mod N. And if something is congruent to zero mod N, therefore N divides A minus B. Now, that's amazing. Now, think about it. Okay, I don't know what these numbers are. They, there's just, all I know is there's N plus one of them, but I know two of them. If I subtract them, I can make it so that they're divisible by N. Hmm. Very, very weird. But that is the nature of Dirichlet's principle, and that's why it requires a lot of um, study practice. And we're going to do that. Okay, the next one is a classic problem. So I have people at a party. Let's say I have, I have many of them. I have n people. People at a party. And we're going to prove that prove that two of them have the same number. The same number of acquaintances. That's very interesting. We have no idea how many people there are. We don't know their relationships with each other. And yet we're supposed to be able to prove that two of them have the same number of acquaintances. And yeah, we can do that by Dirichlet's principle. Watch. Let's take for our boxes to be the number of acquaintances. So you can have anything from 0 all the way up to n minus 1. Why n minus 1? Because this guy, he can know these people, but he's not really an acquaintance of himself, so we don't count that. So the largest possible number of acquaintances a guy can have is n minus 1. He knows all at party. Uh, and this guy knows none. Okay, he knows nobody at the party. He does know himself, though. So this is why we don't classify yourself as an acquaintance. Now, this is very interesting. Let's take case one. Case one is when we have some guy, or maybe one or more, one or more in here. There's at least one in here. Now, if there's one zero acquaintance, there cannot be someone who knows everyone at the party. If he knows everyone, then it's not possible that this guy doesn't know him. Because he knows him, that means he knows him, right? It's uh, two ways. They are acquaintances. So it's, if this guy knows everyone at the party, then it's not possible for this guy here to know nobody, nobody at the party. So that rules this out. So how many ways can we distribute our objects? Well, I've got a guy in here, okay, and here I've got from, I cannot put, if I put another one in here, I've got two people who know the same number of acquaintances. So let me try to distribute it into here. How many are in here? I have from here to here, this is n minus 2, n minus 2, okay. From here to here, I have n minus 2 people. I have n minus 1, uh, n minus 2 boxes. I have n minus 1 people to distribute 
in here because I already did this one. This one finished, so I have n minus 1 people left. n minus 1 into n minus 2 boxes. Some box will have 2 people. And so if a box has two people, it means there are two people that have the same number of acquaintances. Another case is like this. Case two, all right, I have no acquaintance, one acquaintance, all the way down to here, and minus two, and minus one. And I have a guy who knows everyone. Well, if, if he knows everyone, then this is impossible. And I have the same situation here. I have to put n minus 1 people into these boxes and I can't do that without having 2 in one box. You say, why don't you put another one in here? Well, that would be 2 in one box. Finally, here's another case. Case 1, case 2, case 3. Here's another case that maybe we don't think about too much, but I'll think about it. n minus 2 and here. N minus one. I don't put anything in here and I don't put anything in here. Now I have to distribute among these boxes, I have to put n people among these boxes. So of course if I try putting n people in here, I'm going to have a box having two people, right? And there you go. Okay, it's always true. There will always be two people who knows the same number of others at this party. Okay, so that's a quick illustration of um, the basic um, Dirichlet principle. I'd like to talk about it again, maybe even revisit the same problems. It's often good to try to explain the same problem in many ways. So I'm going to be doing that over the next few weeks. If you like this, click like and subscribe for more stuff on Dirichlet's principle and hang on for more videos coming soon.